Welcome to Unique Selling Propositions, how to apply it in the real world, and how to use your documents from Unique Selling Propositions. My name is Carrie Krummenacker and I'm the co-founder of Associate Works, and I'm here to help you to learn how to use some of the documents that we have available for you. If you're here today for the second part of USPs, then you went through a few things about why unique selling propositions are tougher on the service provider, which is you. And they have an enormous perception of value for the consumer, and they really push the edge of the envelope. But really what it does is it generates an internal dialogue for the prospect that you might be introducing it to that makes them think, hmm, that person's aggressive. I like them. Will I like them? Now that's what I'm talking about. And then they ask themselves, how can they do that? Or is this a real thing? So unique selling propositions, the most important thing that I can get across uh, to you today is how to raise that eyebrow of the perspective uh, of the perspective seller. But I need you to understand that everything that I talk to you about here and everything that I show you here today must have broker owner approval. Everything that we talk about has to be um, approved by your broker owner. Because they are aggressive and because they do have implications possibly to you, you need to understand that you're not able to offer certain things that just because we say so. You have to sometimes offer things because it's approved by your broker owner. They are the final say-so. So anything that I teach you how to create here today, I need you to show to your broker owner and make sure that it's okay before you implement anything. Does everyone understand that? I hope that you do because it's super important that you do. So let's talk about features, advantages, and benefits and what your prospect wants versus uh, what feature you may offer to match that need, right? I'm going to talk to you about how to edit your staging document, your free staging document, what you're going to do with this truck that we talk about, or the 30, 60, or 90 day sale guarantee. We're going to talk about um, different pieces and parts like that, and I'm going to show you how to edit those documents. See, you might offer a free staging designation or a free staging evaluation if you have your staging designation. So I'm going to show you how to edit these documents inside of Publisher and where to find them. I'm also going to show you how to talk about it while I'm editing it. And we're going to talk about renting a truck versus buying a truck. Because you can use the um, special clause that says free moving truck. And that 60 day sale guarantee. So let's talk about and let's go. I'm going to switch over to screen share. And then we're going to talk about how you can edit these documents. So I'm going to show you my screen. And I'm going to show you the 60-day sale guarantee inside of Publisher, and I'm going to show you how to edit that document. And at the end of today's class, I will be emailing out all of the documents that we talk about here so that you can have them at your fingertips. But if you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that I have the 60-day sale guarantee certificate. I have the empty nester certificate. I have the upgrade program certificate, and then I have a couple of staging documents that you can use that you can edit up. So this class is kind of a twofold. We talk about the unique selling propositions and why they're important, but we also talk about how you can use the documentation that we have available to you. Now, in order for you to use this documentation, you will need Microsoft Publisher, which is very simply um, gotten 
from Microsoft.com if you don't already have it. And you can get Microsoft 365, which includes Publisher, and you can rent it, if you will, from them for a very minimal cost if you don't already have it. But let's take a look at how Publisher works on this 60-day sale guarantee. And notice that you need to change your name, obviously. So in order to do that, you're going to want to highlight that active box, that text box. And when you highlight that text box, you'll see that it becomes an active text box by having dots around it. And remember guys, you don't only have to use this for unique selling propositions, but you can use this for any of the documentation that we have available inside of Associate Works when we teach you these things. So let's talk about changing words and what you're going to use as far as your words. See, if you've taken your staging designation, you can say staging specialist here instead of just marketing specialist. So we're going to change the name here to my name. And notice that when we typed into that box after highlighting the old name, it automatically resized it for me. So I didn't have to do any work. So we've set this up so that you can use these documents very simply. You would simply make it an active text box. Now say I want to change this from marketing to staging. I would simply double click on the word marketing and then type in the word staging. And you notice that the words are getting larger and smaller as I type because it's doing everything for me. If I want to change the name of my company, I would simply say my, oops, I have it on caps lock, my company. And you simply double click, highlight, and change. So I can change this address to 1256 Main Street by highlighting and typing. It's a very simple process. Now let me show you how to change this Your Logo Here doc or piece of this equipment. If I click on it once, you see that it becomes an active box, an active field. See, when you use Publisher, it's like you're almost taking pieces of paper and scissors and cutting things out and pasting it onto the paper like you did when you were in kindergarten or first grade but you obviously are doing it digitally. And I'm going to take it and highlight it by clicking once, and then I'm going to right-click and get the box up that says Change Picture. So I'm going to go up to this because it's a picture. I'm going to say Change Picture. So I will click on it, and it's going to say, Where do you want me to get your pictures from, Carrie? Where is it? Do you want me to get you from Bing? Do you want it from a file? Well, I want it from a file because I'm looking for my company's logo. So if you take a look, I'm going to, it'll take you to your pictures section and then you will simply look for the picture that you want. Well, I want to change it to the Associate Works logo because I'm, that's my real estate company. But look what happened when I did that. Something odd happened, didn't it? It took the old picture and it put it on the right-hand side, and then it made my Associate Works logo funky. So what I would like to do here is simply right-click again and go up to Change Picture again and say Reset Picture. And then it will make my picture whole again. I'm going to go to the right, activate the Your Logo here, and delete it. And then I'm going to go fix my logo over here by simply clicking on the center dot and making it the correct width again so that I'm not... Uh, stretching my logo or distorting it, if you will. So the center dots allow you to move your logo 
by shrinking it down vertically or shrinking it in and out horizontally. But if you click on a side dot, you can do that and make it so that you'll keep the distortion from happening. So I simply make my logo whole again and move it around by clicking on it as it's activated. And I know that it's activated because it has the dots around it. Now take a look. I spelled street wrong over here. I put two R's in it. So I'm obviously going to proofread what I type. And I'm going to click in the center and activate my cursor. And then I'm going to backspace and add another E there. Well, I knew that it was spelled wrong because it had that red little line underneath it. It let me know. So I simply click in the middle, backspace, and put an E there. Very simple process. Now I'm going to show you how to save it as either a PDF or a JPEG. To save it as, you can go to File, and then push Save As, and it's going to say, where do you want me to save this to? Well, I want to save it to my desktop, so I'm going to browse, or look, desktop was someplace that I saved it to recently. So I would click on Desktop. 60-day sale guarantee certificate, and then I can choose how I want to save it. Well, I'm going to go down to PDF and save it as a PDF. So let's see if we can go to the empty nester and show you that while we wait for my computer to respond on this one. So let's take a look. Let me just show you one more time how to change that logo because it's really important how to change pictures. One of the things that you can do is you can either delete it and go up to insert and go to pictures as you see me doing here and when I put this picture of the associate works in as I delete it you'll see that it comes in in its full size and then it's up to me to make it fit in the box by selecting one of the corner dots and shrinking it to the right size so that's one way that you can s correct or change the picture. And always remember that there is a save your button in your computer. And it's called undo. So let's say I wanted to undo what I just did because I wanted to correct something. I can simply select undo. That undid the moving of it. And then I can select the undo of the taking out of the logo. So I wanted to show you the second way, which is right click, change picture, select the picture from a file, and see it puts the picture in exactly where it was. So I'm going to click in the white space, activate this your logo here, delete it, then I want to go over here and I want to fix that logo up. So I'm going to say reset picture and then I'm going to undistort it and drag it into the place that I want. See, Publisher, what it allows you to do is it allows you to almost be like a graphic designer but with little effort. So let's go back here and see if this is unfrozen and it has not. So here, if I go to Save As and I go to PDF again and save this as a PDF, you'll see that it comes up as a PDF file. And I didn't have that button clicked that said open file after publishing so that it can show me mine automatically. So if you see that I save as and then went to PDF, there is my empty nester certificate in PDF so that it's now uneditable.
and I can simply print it. But another piece of equipment that you could do is you can, when you're saving it as a PDF, you can go to Options and you can choose how you want to print it, what it is that you want to do. And you can also go into Print Options and select multiple copies per sheet. And you'll see if I click multiple copies per sheet, that I'm going to get three on one piece of paper and then I'm free to cut it and print multiples when I'm using my USPs. So I'll select OK, I'll select OK, and then I'll push Save. And when it opens it up, it's asking me if I want to replace it. And yes, I do want to replace the current one. When I open it up, I've got three on one piece of paper. So this is called a three up in printing standards. Let's take a look at a different type of document, a door hanger. See, remember we spoke, if you have your staging designation, you can then use these different unique selling propositions in order to advertise yourself. So let's look at this staging door hanger that you can use. And you can zoom in if you go to the Home button and you click on it. You can zoom in and get everything closer to you. So if I'm here, I can go down here also to the plus. See my cursors down there at the plus? And I can zoom in so that I can see exactly what it is that I'm working on. See, it says my company is the proven market leader. So, of course, you would highlight my company and put in your company's name. Your company. You would change the statistics that you find. However, you would leave the free staging consultation. See, if they're thinking about a move, they should not be undersold. Staging your governor's walk home means more money and a faster sale. So you would change that subdivision name to a different subdivision, the one that you're working in, simply by highlighting and typing. It's a very simple process. I highly recommend that you brand yourself Brand yourself. You see here, this person branded themselves with a standing picture. So you can take and change the picture. I taught you how to do that. You can either delete it, go up to insert, look for pictures inside of your pictures, and use your branding that you use. Let's see if I can find somebody's branding. Let's just use this bullhorn. And you can put that in, whatever your picture is for you, so that it's something that they see all of the time on your pieces of material. But I want to show you something really neat that Publisher allows you to do. If you're inside a format, and you've got a white background, see how this white background goes into this burgundy over here? If I take and I go up to recolor and I say set transparent color, I can take this little cursor and I can get rid of the white, the pristine white, and I can make this fit better. You see the box went away. So now if I bring it back up, He's sitting right there, and it does no longer go over my real estate staging expert. You see where it's active? That would have all been white had I not done that set transparent color. So let me do undo so I can show you that. I'll undo this move. And see now, if you look where I've got it in the center, it's over this staging. Well, I want the staging to be right next to his coat and his pants. So I'm going to go to Recolor, 
and set transparent color and click on the white and now it's available. Now if I didn't want to set the transparent color, so I'll undo that, another thing that you can do is activate this box where the Staging Expert logo is. And remember, this, is, this can be used for all publisher documents, so this is an important piece of equipment that I'm teaching you here. If you activate it, and you know it's active because it has the dots around all of the corners, you can simply right-click and say, oh, it didn't bring it up. Oh, here it is, yes. I can say bring forward. And if I push bring forward, it will, it's like I'm taking the piece of paper from the back and I'm pasting it onto the top. Now there's another way to bring something forward. So let me do undo so I can show you. And it's simply up here where it says bring forward. And now it's to the front of the piece of paper. Now I can move this around. I can put it here. I can put this bullhorn. I can put a staging expert. I can also insert another picture by simply going to insert pictures and I can put uh, my logo. Say I'm a, a Remax uh, real estate professional. I can put my logo in right here and I can shrink it and move it and I can also set the transparent color again so that it all fits and I can make it uh, go around the piece of paper and I can, I can do all sorts of things inside of Publisher. I can bring this forward again because once I put this on top of it, I might need to bring this forward again. So I would simply say bring forward again. And now I can make it bigger and I could go over the, the balloon. I could shrink it by simply clicking on the dots. The dots are the key to moving and or making anything larger or smaller inside of a publisher document. Let's take a look at one more. And of course I would do the same save as for the PDF before I take you to the next one. Let's do that again. Save as. I would go to PDF. I would go to Options. I would go to Print Options and I would say multiple copies per sheet. Now I'm getting two on one piece of paper. I will say OK. I will say OK. And now I will save it again so that you can see the two on one piece of paper. So now I have these two pieces and I can simply cut as needed. I'm going to close this document up and I'm going to show you a letter that you might want to edit up. Now this letter is also done in Publisher and it's important because you can do things with it. So now remember I want to see the letter up more up close so I'm going to go down to my zoom button and click on the arrow to bring it in and I'm going to start editing this document. One thing that you should, um, that you can use is inside of this editing tool up in the upper right hand corner, you can go to replace. Now let's take a look. I want to replace this name, Carrie Krummenacker. So I'm going to copy it by doing control C and I'm going to paste it in the search for bar by doing control V. And now I've got the name that I'm searching for. I'm searching for Carrie Krummenacker and I'm going to replace it with my name, Realtor Rachel. So the thing that I'm going to do in order to what I'm going what it's going to do for me is it's now going to find and replace every place that Carrie Krummenacker exists, it's going to type in Realtor Rachel for me. So I simply have to push the Replace All button and it says, hey, I reached the end of the selection that you told me. Do you want me to do the rest of the story? And I would say yes. And now I'll continue to say yes. 
and it will tell me we're done. And guess what? Now, instead of it saying Carrie Cromanacker everywhere, it says Realtor Rachel. So it will change it in every single place in the document. So, of course, we have a company name here, so I would copy that and I would paste it into the search for and I would put in my company and then publisher after I push the replace all button will replace it all for me it's just gonna ask me if, if I want it to keep looking so now every single place that exit team realty existed has now been replaced with my company or your company's name it's a very um, quick trick in order to change documents in order to change the way that a document reads and you would simply right click on the change picture again and do all of the other um, editing that you need then save it as a PDF and send it off to the printer now when you're using a letter such as this we've designed them in this manner so that you can um, catch the reader's eye if you will so when you're using this letter what we want you to do is we want you to fold it with the picture and the uh, beginning facing out so we want the words facing out unlike you would normally um, fold a letter we want them to be facing out so that when and we want it to be facing the flap as well when you put it into the envelope so when you're sending it off to your potential uh, sellers you would have this facing out so that when they open it up and they pull it out it catches their eye and if you notice there are three distinct sections and the reason that that is is because we want them to continue reading you have about five seconds to catch their attention then you have about 10 seconds to keep it so if you've caught their attention the first time and they go to the next line that's in bold and standing out hopefully they'll read that paragraph and then you take them to the next section by that other little headline that says good enough never is and hopefully they'll read that one and they'll get through the entire letter so that you can keep their attention and you would save this letter send it off to the printer fold it the way that I just described for you put it into an envelope with it facing with the picture and beginning um, teaser if you will facing the flap and address it in blue ink hand dressed in blue ink for your unique selling propositions so let's talk about the way that we use a 60-day sale guarantee you know I told you earlier that you may not use any of these um, pieces of equipment without getting broker owner approval a 60-day sale guarantee is a um, interesting piece of equipment because it's the teaser that gets you in the door and you typically well what happens is unless as explained Monday unless they agree to all of your terms you're not going to offer it to them and what do I mean by that it's your sale price that you deem appropriate as the real estate professional and typically when you explain all of those things for them they opt out of the 60-day sale guarantee but it still got you in the door let's talk about the upgrade program which I showed you how to edit up see you're going to use the upgrade program in order to get into the door and if they sell their current home and then buy a larger home you're going to give them a 1% commission credit but you've gotten the buy and the sell 
So that seems to work out pretty well, and it gets you in the door. And we have a special clauses glossary that I'm going to email out to you so that you can get broker owner approval. Works upgrade program, the empty nester works. Sell your current home, then buy a smaller, more affordable one, and save tens of thousands. It's all in the Special Clauses Glossary so that you know exactly how to write it upon broker approval. There's a for, for, sale by assistant, for Sale by Owner Assistance Program that we offer. And those can be offered to your people upon um, broker owner approval so that you can assist. And eventually, they all list with you as evidenced by our eBall program that we teach on a regular basis. So let's take a look at these special things that you can also offer. Now that I've shown you how to edit these documents, I will show you that you can offer special coupons for sellers for free landscaping. Free landscaping? What? In your free service, you must be specific. See, landscaping is mulch. Exactly how much mulch, exactly how many impatience, exactly how many pieces of sod, if you choose to do that. But one more thing that's unique that you can offer and you can bring in as a sample is your My Work Suite single property websites. If you have not signed up, for your My Work Suite single property websites, which are free to you, sponsored by your bank, you should go to MyWorkSuite.com and sign up now. Because the last unique selling proposition that you'll bring in is you can make a sample website for your listing appointment. Especially if, especially if it's an expired listing. See, because the expireds have pictures in the MLS. So you have pictures for them. If not, then you can simply uh, give show them a sample of one of your others that you've used and tell them all about how My Work Suite or your single property website is going to get their home sold faster. There's so many different unique selling propositions out there that you can use. And I'm going to send you the special glossary, the special clauses glossary. But remember, everything that you do inside of a unique selling proposition must be approved by your broker owner. Because every broker owner has different views on things that you're able to offer. So we require you to get that broker owner approval when using these unique selling propositions. I hope that I've given you insight on how to use the marketing materials and how to edit them and different things that you can offer in order to tweak your prospective seller's interest and get you in the door. Thank you for being here and have a great day.